It is mock season again because the government says you have to do loads of them this year and um, they might count if we go back to essential recess grades which I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that we are going to have exams this year. Cheating in mocks is really easy to do and you might get away with it but you shouldn't. It is pretty easy to cheat in mocks and I don't think I'm surprising anyone if I tell you how it's done. There is this thing called the internet where if you search for something you can find it um, and you probably have to pay for it um, or if you're on social media like I am people um, pop up in your DMs offering to sell you things all of the time and these are generally the, the that November 2021 papers that are still um, in secure area for exam papers um, being sold to students and students buying them and the reason that schools use these as mocks is because they are written as exam they are exam papers they are written as exam papers they've got the right balance of assessment objectives they've got the right balance of skills they are good papers it takes about 18 months to write a paper um and the alternative to teachers using these secure ones is them making them up themselves um which might mean that they're too hard so they're not representative so they're too easy they're not representative they don't have the right balance of skills or right balance of assessment objectives um so that's generally why they are use and they are supposed to be secure the november 2021 ones are secure the november 2020 papers have just been released um however it is pretty easy for teachers to tell if this is what you've done if you've gone and memorized the mark scheme from a paper and then just turned up in your mock and written down the mark scheme um, because mark schemes use very specific language that is very teachery language it's not very like um, conversational language that you might get if you're just talking to people and it's not um, how people generally write answers so it is very very obvious when marking a pile of um, mocks the one that stands out as having like you, you you look at the mark scheme so much the one student that has copied the mark scheme and memorized the mark scheme and then written it down stands out like an absolute red flag we know you've done it um but there are dangers w with this you know you are guessing which paper is going to be your mock you are guessing that it's going to be their november 2021 papers and then if you just learn that and if you didn't do any actual revision, if it's a different paper or the teacher's gone in and changed the numbers in the questions or has gone in and changed kind of like the, the definition that they're looking for or something. So it's still the paper, but they've tweaked it a little bit to make it impossible for you to just write down the, the answers to the mark schemes. Um, you are going to come really unstuck and you're going to get a potentially worse grade than if you'd actually just revised for the paper. And the problem is with memorising answers like this is that it takes up a lot of time, time that you could actually be spending doing proper revision, revising, learning something properly. And if you're not sure which paper it is that is going to be set, you might decide to memorise two different mark schemes, or even three different mark schemes. And this is a massive amount of time and effort that you're putting into something that is ultimately pointless, which you could be putting into just revising. Um, so obviously, as I said, teachers can tell it's so obvious when somebody memorizes a mark theme and just writes it down. But it's really hard for us to turn around and go, oh, this is what you've done. We we're going to mark you down on this because we don't generally have any actual evidence that that is what you've done. So there are a few things that teachers do to get around accusing you without any actual evidence. Um, first of all is if they notice you've done it after paper one out of three is change the exam paper. Just go back to Reaper Graphics and get a whole load new set printed off from a year that you probably won't guess. Um, which screws you over basically because you haven't done your original exam and you've memorised a mark scheme for a paper that you're not sitting. 
what they might do is then decide to take an average of papers, so not just the one that um, you sat and got 100% on, which is always suspicious, always when somebody gets 100% on paper, is it suspicious, um, that you got 100% on, take an average and then use that as your grade. Um, so taking into account the second or the third paper where they worked out what you were doing and potentially you actually didn't do very well. So all that time spent memorising the marks games was completely pointless. Um, the other thing they might do is then go and make their own paper um, and just decide that you have to sit, the whole class has to sit an additional mock to replace the first one or to use as an average with the first one. Um, so it's kind of harsh because then it's like a whole class punishment for something that teachers can't necessarily prove but we definitely know you've done. Um, it's just making you do a whole another mock and you know especially if it's kind of like you've been revising for mocks all the time, just walking into class and springing another mock on you when you should have been revising the whole time is something that I have heard teachers doing if they suspect this is something somebody in the class has done. The other thing is um, if you're trying to like game the system to get a really good predicted grade because um, teachers are starting to think about UCAS references um, for year 12s or like predicted grades to go on UCAS reports we need, you need your teachers to write references for you and you want them to say good things about you. Now teachers are never going to say bad things on references, that's not how references work, but they can just not say things. For example, kind of like, so-and-so is really hard working, so-and-so completes the work. So-and-so always hands work in on time, so-and-so completes the work. Um, you can see there's a big difference in there, even though they're both saying positive things, one's saying something really, really positive and one's saying a factually correct statement. You don't necessarily want to have a reference full of factually correct statements because your teacher knows that you memorised the marks game and um, just just ruined things for everyone else. So I know people that go around memorising marks games think it's a good idea and the chances of me dissuading these people to do it are actually very very slim but it is so pointless because mocks are there to help you revise and practice and if you're cheating at revising, it's literally just a massive waste of time for you and your teachers and for everybody else. So please don't do it. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of your time. If you don't have much time left for the exam, you could be doing something better with it instead of getting a fake grade which isn't representative of what you get on your exams. So please don't do it. It's pointless. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.